Working It Out, a podcast show about diversity, equity, and inclusion in our workplaces, our communities, and our lives. A show where we put diversity and inclusion to work. Got problems on the job. We're working it out. With that work makes got you stressing. We're working it out. With that yeah, we're me. working it out, working it out, working it out. Welcome. I'm Dr. Vanessa Weaver, your host of Working It Out. Today we are speaking about building Black and Latina wealth. And there's a special initiative uh, within BMO Bank that has been created to nurture wealth creation and development in communities of color. I'm so excited to be joined today by Anthony Hudson. He's the regional president of retail banking at BMO Bank. Welcome, Anthony. Thanks for having me today, Dr. Weaver. We're thrilled to join. Just talk a little more about what BMO Harris Bank is doing, particularly as it relates to uh, the Black and Latinx business owner community. Well, I'm so glad to have you here because, you know, one of the one of the uh, focus of our working it out uh, podcast and video cast is really to look at it and explore ways that corporate America and our financial institutions are really supporting diversity equity and inclusion in communities of color. And so this is a particularly special and important conversation for us to have today. So Anthony, I, I think we need to congratulate you on a recent promotion uh, as the regional president. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, this year will be year nine for me with BMO. And mm -hmm. uh, I have been blessed to serve in a variety of roles uh, from our wealth management team, uh, to helping to launch BMO Empower, which I know we'll talk about uh, here just in a bit. Uh, but this most recent move as our regional president, head of retail banking here in Wisconsin, uh, was uh, one that was very exciting and a bit of a homecoming for me as my career started in retail. And so uh, we have a focus on helping everyday customers, uh, our business banking, uh, segment, as well as we have a mass affluence strategy. So how we help uh, individuals and families really grow their wealth. I couldn't be more excited to serve in this role. And this is so important because as you know, you know the stats much better than I, but we know that the net worth of white families is somewhere what between 110 to 125,000 compared to the network of black and Latino families which is about $15,000. I mean, I, that's such a tremendous gap. And so it, it, it already starts Black and Latina families at a disadvantage as we start talking about wealth creation. And yeah, so in, the, in the simplest form, Dr. Weaver, um, when I think about my purpose and how I am um, using my talent, my, my platform in today's environment, uh, in its simplest form, it's how do we close that wealth divide that we know exists, um, as you pointed out, uh, we know that it exists for black and brown people at disproportionate rates, right? And in my opinion, there's a lot to it, but the sooner that we begin to solve for that wealth divide, the more empowerment it goes back to diverse business owners, right? Black and brown families. And that circulates to diverse communities and shows up in a meaningful way. And so uh, that divide that you're, you're talking about is top of mind, I would say for myself and many of my colleagues and how do we take action today? Well, I know your, your, this initiative, Be More Empowered. And I love that that term, be, I say be more empowered, but that, <laughs> but that particular initiative is really directed to invest, what, $5 billion uh, to address various affecting uh, Black and Brown and other ethnic minority businesses. So, so can you tell us a little bit of, about that $5 billion? And we're going to also ask you how we can get a piece of it. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, get really excited talking about this. Uh, and I have to start this story by saying uh, what initiated the conversations for us at BMO uh, 
we, we certainly knew that we needed to do more, but like many companies and many Americans, uh, as we went through a period during the spring of 2020 and saw the tragic events, the murder of George Floyd, mm. um, the death of Breonna Taylor, the death of Ahmaud Aubrey, uh, all uh, black people uh, that seemingly fell uh, to their demise in a very unfortunate way, we said, we got to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And as a financial institution, we said, how can we best position ourselves to do it? I give a ton of credit to our leaders, our uh, CEO, Dave Casper here in the U.S., and the CEO of BMO Financial Group, Daryl White, is they uh, did a tremendous job of listening and hearing feedback. Our tagline is to boldly grow the good in business and in life. And in many ways we said, what does that mean for black and brown people? Mm -hmm. So after a lot of conversation uh, and, and input by leaders across the organization, in November of 2020, we launched Be More Empower. Uh, you commented earlier, it's $5 billion that we've committed to deploy. So deploy 5 billion in capital over five years to do two things. One, it's for us to show up in the moment and to help black and brown people, families, communities, businesses, when they were and still are being impacted at disproportionate rates. So in this COVID environment, right? Number two, we said, how can we launch something that isn't just about today, right? It isn't just about one individual, but it's about generational change. So we said, if we execute on this properly, this will be our way of putting a flag in the ground and combating systemic racism for many years to come. Well, you know, Anthony, this is phenomenal because we know that as a result of COVID, almost 50 something percent, 50 percent of black businesses just died. They just closed up. And the Latina business was close behind, something around 42%. And if you think about Black and, and Latina business as being the largest employer, then we know a lot of folks lost their jobs in addition to losing their businesses. So I really commend your, your bank and your this program for really boldly saying we need to take a look at that. So how does Be More Empowered help deal with that issue? Yeah, so, so that's a really big question, Dr. Weaver, and I do my best to provide a somewhat simple answer to it by sharing an okay. example. So you just talked about black and brown businesses closing their doors at alarming rates over the last two years. Yeah, right? 50 to 60 percent of black owned businesses close their doors and won't reopen. And for us, this was an issue. And so in its simplest form, we said beyond the PPP resources that were um, uh, brought by the government through financial institutions, and we played a big role there, what more can we do? And so I give my uh, colleagues here at BMO a ton of credit because we had people that went to work for several months to create what is known as our Black and Latinx uh, business banking program, right? Mm -hmm. And essentially what it is, is it's a business line of credit specifically for Black and Latinx business owners. This line of credit, uh, we went and we worked with our legal team. We worked with um, uh, our marketing partners. We worked with our sales leader. We worked with regulators to say, how can we put together something that everyone feels really good about? that if we roll it out properly and we get it into the right hands, it will keep doors from closing. And I'm proud to say in the first year, we helped hundreds of businesses. We piloted this product in the Chicago land area in Northwest Indiana. Uh, our US headquarters is in Chicago. So, the, so that was a lot of why we drove the pilot there. But in, in the first year, we were able to help over 300 Black and Latinx small businesses keep their doors open. And the conversation really began to shift from just keeping the doors open to seeing actual small business growth in this segment, the population that we were able to help. And so that, that's one example when I think about BMO Empower, particularly how do we 
um, really get intentional about providing capital to black and brown business owners to help them to be better, to help them to grow, to help them to uh, navigate the challenging times that we're in. Well, I, I love those, those uh, results that you've had in the first year. That's phenomenal. And, and I really value those results because in recent studies, they've shown that only about 20% of the commitments that many financial institutions have made and banks have made have actually gone into supporting black and brown businesses. And so after George Floyd, as you know, there was a real strong commitment to put uh, monies into the black communities to, to provide financial support. But a year, a year and a half later, less than you know, 20% of that of those funds actually landed. So what's been the secret of your bank and be more empowered? that got you to be able to, to penetrate and, and cut through that to provide that support and uh, banking assistance? Yeah, I, I think it starts with, uh, so if our US CEO was on with this right now, Dave Casper would tell you, uh, we recognize our efforts, but we're constantly striving to get better, right? So there is some humility in that we'll, we'll never have this all figured out, but we're constantly working to be better than we were yesterday. And uh, I would also mesh that with uh, the, the statement that you may have heard, what, get, what gets measured gets done. And so when we rolled out BMO Empower, we said we want to deploy $5 billion over five years. We also knew that we had to be very intentional about a communication plan. It happens internally and it happens externally. So every six months since we uh, launched, we have shared a press release on how we're doing relative to deploying that capital. I'm pleased to say that today, just since November of 2020, we've deployed over $2 billion of our $5 billion commitment, right? And we can uh, connect the dots between capital that hit black and brown owned small businesses. We can uh, connect the dots between capital that reach mid market size businesses because we do have black and brown uh, companies operating north of $10 million in annual sales. That is also a very important segment. We can connect the dots between our community development and community investment work as we've made very intentional investments into funds that support black and brown businesses. We've been really intentional about lending to developers that are building in diverse communities, as well as our corporate social responsibility work, which includes our supplier diversity efforts. So we have to measure it. We have to be intentional about sharing that report card when it's good or if it's bad. And the humility of just saying, it's never going to be enough and we're going to challenge ourselves on a daily basis. Well, I'm, I'm curious, uh, when you talk about two, investing $2 billion in a year and a half, that's a, that's a pretty impressive number. With your corporate headquarters being in Chicago, Illinois, and of course, I think you're located in Milwaukee, are there any kind of geographical restrictions or boundaries to being part of your Be More Empowered effort? Yeah, that, that is a really good question. We get that one often. I would say from a small business perspective, right? And generally speaking, your businesses that have revenues um, less than 5 million annually, we have been very tactical about operating where we actually have branch distribution, right? So that is largely in the Midwest. Uh, along with a presence that we have in both Florida and Arizona as well. Mm -hmm. um, from a mid-market perspective, and so as you start talking about businesses that operate regionally or nationally, uh, we have a broader mandate and our capabilities stretch the entire U.S., right? So when we launched this in initiative in November of 2020, uh, as, as we were putting together the business plan, when I thought about how we can reach black and brown businesses of size, you have to think about the DMV, right? And within six months, I was on a plane meeting with some of the best and brightest minority-owned businesses in the DMV 
because there's a great opportunity that exists there. So the DC, Maryland, and Virginia corridor, uh, you know, statistically speaking, there are certain spots across the US where black and brown businesses thrive, right? Or at least it's growing and maintaining at a rate that's different than the rest of the country. Uh, DC, Maryland, and Virginia happens to be one of those corridors where you all have really figured some things out. Why is that? <laughs> that is might that be better. Like seat of the federal government? <laughs> I, I think there's probably uh, a variety of reasons. Dr. Weaver, I, I'd be interested in hearing your opinion on this. But I would say um, business grows where businesses are supported. And so the federal government, might that play into it and the number of contracts and businesses that can not only get off the ground and open their doors, but maintain and grow, right? Like there's some things in the ecosystem there that I would say is working better than other parts of the country. I see. We well, you know you, it was interesting and you and I have worked together with the Take on Race Initiative, which is really focused with bringing different corporations together to address racial disparities. And, and you and I have been working on the wealth creation one. And through our research, we know that one of the big challenges with, well, there's several, but for black and brown businesses to access loans and, and investment is that maybe they're not as ready in terms of how they need to organize their businesses to uh, be prepared to take advantage of these. Has that been your experience? Have you seen um, issues in how, how, in the understanding of black and brown businesses, what they need to, how they need to be organized or presented to take advantage of say like a Be More Empowered initiative? Yeah. Um... So, so maybe I can answer that a bit different and you let me know if, if, if I actually hit the mark here in terms of answering the question. I wanna be careful when I talk about readiness, right? Mm -hmm. Or someone um, uh, being ready to take advantage of uh, services that financial institutions have to offer. Um, I think readiness has a lot to do with, and I mentioned this earlier, with the ecosystem. And so if I am never privy to someone in my uh, area of business, uh, if I am not privy to best practices and where landmines may reside, if I don't have um, a small circle of professional partners that help me uh, to launch and grow and maintain. Um, if I am not privy to diverse expertise that is willing to meet me where I am, it will be very tough for me to effectively launch and uh, exist long term. And so a bit of, of, of uh, what we have taken a hard look at in BMO and Power is one of our differentiators is we want to bring a diverse team of bankers to this group that we really want to work with. Said differently, we want to bring um, someone that culturally understands you, someone that uh, also has the expertise and the experience to really understand your business and to help to mesh the two of those to take you high, right? And so, for us, it's, you got to understand, we, we won't say yes to everyone. That, that is not the intent here. But when we do have someone that, quote unquote, isn't ready or that doesn't hear a yes today, we're very intentional about how we wrap our arms around that individual and work towards a yes for the future. That is awesome because so often we feel like, you know, Black and brown business owners feel like we, we get double victimized because we're not, we don't always have those kind of relationships and the, and the kind of knowledge set that we need to be able to be more empowered and, and access these opportunities. And what you said is that versus blaming the victim, you don't have that kind of victim mentality, that victim perception. You look at what are the ways that you can empower businesses, whether they're ready, ready now, or what do we need to, what, do you, what can you and the bank and your colleagues do to help 
address their needs. I think that's phenomenal. I commend you on that. As a business owner, if I can be biased to that point, I mean, that's that's an exceptional um, uh, commitment to make. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you on behalf of, of other black and brown businesses. Well, so Anthony, I'm, I'm curious, you, you just got promoted to regional president. You've only been with the bank nine years. You seem to be a very bold and confident leader and comfortable, you know, being who you are in your own space. So what is your why for doing this? Why, why are you committed to this? Yeah, uh, Dr. Weaver, I, uh, and I want to connect my answer here back to uh, just a book into your previous question. Like I've seen amazing things happen when access is provided. Mm-hmm. I think about my own career, uh, which is now almost 20 years in, and I would not be here before you if I didn't have people along the way that made very intentional investments into Anthony Hudson, that provided support, that provided access and opportunities. And so now for me, it's purpose work to use this platform to provide support to provide opportunities and to provide access. And I think about access, we often hear about access to capital, but I think it's also really important that people have access to a network. So individuals that understand them and their businesses and their career goals to be able to weigh in, to assist. I think about uh, access in terms of the diverse um, expertise, right, And, and how you're able to uh, relate and connect with someone maybe that looks like you, that understands your background and understands your customer base in a different way, but also access to education, right? Like when, when I think about our most successful business owners, or I think about some of our leaders within BMO who uh, have had unbelievable success, I often hear just about how they uh, never stop learning. Right. So our ability to continue to provide access to education and expertise, that is what's worked for me uh, in my own career. And that's what we're doing and being really intentional about with BMO and Power is uh, use this purpose work to help to elevate others. What a legacy you're leaving. And it's such a young phase of your career. This is just phenomenal. So you talked about the importance of continuous learning. If you had to give three tips to Black and and Latinx business owners who want to expand and grow their business, what would those three tips be? If I had to simplify it to three tips, uh, here's what I would tell them. Uh, Establish a team of trusted professional partners, right? And when I talk about professional partners, I certainly mean that in terms of a banking team, I certainly mean that in terms of a legal team. And then also when you think about CPAs and accountants, you know, I think that those three professional partners are critically important for business owners. Uh, And I would say that banking partner is critically important for professionals in general, right? A lot of um, your success is contingent upon how strong your plan is. And I would say your plan needs to be surrounded by expertise. So that's one, the professional partners piece. Two, uh, I believe that today, more than ever, in any of our lifetimes, there's more resources out there than ever. And that could be resources in terms of capital, could be resources in terms of education and thought leadership. Um, And we talk a lot about this through our Take on Race uh, initiative, Dr. Weaver, but I think we have to be very, very intentional about how we get our fair share of those resources, right? Do not let this moment pass us by and miss an opportunity to get a hold of resources that you've never had before. And then lastly, um, and, and I truly mean this, you mentioned that we've had more black and brown businesses impacted than that, right? What we cannot allow happen is that this moment in time, we wipe out a whole segment, a thriving, um, brilliant, motivated entrepreneurs. So my last piece is, uh, you asked me about my purpose and my why. 
we all have to do our part to plant more seeds that we know will bloom and blossom in the future, right? Whatever your role is, whatever seats you have, it's all of our responsibility. And I think about this coming off of the recent celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King mm -hmm. is to take that hope and that dream and pair it with some action, right? Do your part. Well, I tell you, in Be More Bank is clearly doing this part. And I just feel you're such a tremendous role model for other people of color uh, at your level in organizations who are comfortable in their skin and committed to not only you know, their own career, but to advancing the success of other people that look like him or look like her in our communities, because it really does take that inside person who knows how the system work and who knows how to kind of make uh, certain pro programs happen and gain acceptance. It re we really need more of you uh, to advance this whole issue around wealth creation and, and uh, addressing wealth disparity. So I just, uh, I commend you very much for that. And I say that really from the bottom of my heart. I mean, I just think it's critically important for us to let our viewers know how they could access, be more empowered and connect with your bank. Because once they listen to you, and know that that's such a committed institution like your bank, and I guess in others that you're, you're working with too, they're gonna to wanna to make the connection. So how can they get in contact with Be More Empowered? Thank you so much, Dr. Weaver, for giving me this opportunity to share this information. So BMO Harris Bank uh, is headquartered out of Chicago, Illinois. And as I shared earlier, we support uh, all 50 states, uh, in terms of our BMO Empower initiative. Uh, you can learn more about BMO Harris Bank and our BMO Empower initiative at www.bmoharris, B-M-O-H-A-R-R-I-S.com. Well, Anthony, Mr. Anthony Hudson, Regional President of Retail, I want to thank you for really sharing some critically important information around a diversity, inclusion, and equity initiative that your bank, Be More Bank Harris, is undertaking. So on behalf of my Working It Out crew and team, we want to thank you and also thank our viewers and our listeners for tuning in this week. I'm Dr. Vanessa Weaver, your host of Working It Out. I wish you a safe, productive, and what we call Be Happy Week. Goodbye. Working It Out is brought to you by Alignment Strategies, a management consultancy with more than three decades of experience in diversity, equity, and inclusion, and organizational development. To learn more, visit alignmentstrategies.com. Got problems on the job. We're working it out with that workplace Dr. got you stressing. We're working it out with that. Yeah, Dr. we're Dr. working it out, working it out, working it out.